I think the classic perception of revelation as a clear statement from God is wrong. Okay, I, I have an article written called The Cloudy Revelation. Sure, it's God, an unclear statement right, from God, unclear. I agree. But in that case, and, what tells you how to understand and, and it the except fact is, is when reason? You, okay, ah, so that's it. The fact is, is understanding revelation from a, from a halachic perspective, from an orthodox perspective, is one of the most complex studies in Jewish thought. And a lot of people don't undertake it. But the fact is, when you talk about 70 faces of Torah, Okay, and the differences of opinion, and you take like I like I've pointed out to someone, like if you take the abortion issue, okay, you take the spectrum in the in the secular world, and then you take the spectrum in halachic opinion, it comes in a little bit of both ends. That's all it does. It just comes in a little bit of both ends. And you sit there and say, well, Revelation's just it sort of cuts it down a little bit. It was there? Now it's down to here. So so what's it doing? And the fact is, it creates a new language. It creates a new a new perception. But you can't. You have to see revelation as very very different. And revelation is not meant to quash the individual. You know, as a, in terms of even our understanding of right and wrong, that originates with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The fact is is that and 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 the snake was right that we can't become godlike unless we know good and evil. A lot of people say the mistake, the mistake that Adam and Eve made, a lot of people refer to it as a mistake and not sin, because the word sin is not used until, until, um, until the story of Cain and Abel. It was a mistake. The mistake was, is that God obviously, one will Shiva say, God obviously had to make sure Adam and Eve knew, knew good and evil within. Our tension is our inner knowledge of good and evil, which is also divine, and revelation. And that creates a completely different dynamic, but, which is what you're pointing to. But then, if, if we've got the reason, right. if we know what's right, well, what do we need the revelation for? Uh, exactly. And, 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 there, and there becomes a greater tension. Mendelssohn's answer, you know, but Moshe Mendelssohn basically, that was his, uh, Mendelssohn's answer just in terms of revealed law is not a good answer. I shouldn't say not a good answer. I have problems with the answer, but the fact is, what it does, it creates a new, I think what it does, it creates a new highlighting of all the issues. To me, it transforms moral dialogue. And that's one of the reasons I can't stand Kierkegaard, for example. If you're just doing what Abraham said on faith, if you're doing the Akedah based on faith, then you're an idiot. Oh, Kierkegaard's okay. interpretation is terrible. Uh, I mean, but this is uh, all Jewish, be, all Jewish commentary Abraham, uh, over Abraham, the centuries there's disagrees no faith here. with uh, Th This with, is no faith. This is not a faith issue. Because faith is real. It had to be that he had knowledge of God saying something which inherently contradicted him the same way he had stumbled. The real issue that exists is why did Abraham confront God intelligently at stone, well here he just goes along. This is, this is, this is, this is certainly an issue, but right. maybe one of the ways that you can get around the issue is to say, uh, contra Kierkegaard, that the greatest moment in the story is not when Abraham raises the knife to slay his son, mm -hmm. but when Abraham puts the knife back down, well, and we move into a kind more. of mature uh, understanding of ethics and of our relationship yeah, to God, that, and yeah, the way but, God but, speaks and does not speak. God, or is no, that no. No? no. So, well, if it's not despite God, then how do we understand it? Because God clearly the, says, This is an interpretation this, right? that it would right. take me a certain amount of time to build up. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I know that people in the Reform Movement have that, have that interpretation. There's Orthodox people who have that interpretation. To me, that interpretation is a sophisticated discussion of morality and ethics, which is what the halachic process is about. I'm not going to say the halachic process always comes out with something that you agree with, but I can say something is, is that the halachic process highlights the, the very discussion of morality. In other words, in other words, the famous story, the famous statement of, of, of the school of Hillel and the school of Shammai, they were always able to quote the other side. In other words, morality, the, the, the Marami Prague says, is nothing is black and white, everything is gray. So what I find in, in a sophisticated understanding of morality is that you basically understand the tension of an issue. And that was what highlighted. And then you have to figure out how to make that decision. The halakha pros and comes to decision. Sometimes you may not See, like the answer. I want to just highlight one thing here. Yeah. The, the, uh, what, what we're in danger of, of, of uh, doing here is an Oedipal operation, right? Mm -hmm. a, God talks to Abraham. Now this is a very, in the simplistic understanding right. of it. God, God's relationship to Abraham is like Abraham's relationship to Isaac. It's a, somewhat of a paternal relationship, right? So the father tells something to the son. In this case, he says, go kill my grandson, as it were, right? Go kill your son. And now you're saying that, that, what he, that, that the, the halacha, or the way to understand the Torah, is that what God possibly means okay. is the very opposite of what he says, right? right? And the Torah is so flexible that no, really, this really Torah, you don't even have to take God Torah, that seriously. No, no, I don't want to make the Torah so flexible. Okay. What I'm saying right. is, is, is that the true understanding of God's knowledge demands a tremendous amount of thought. If you aren't willing to put in the energy to work and understand 
reading the, reading the works and so forth and so on, really analyzing, which Abraham eventually does afterwards, because Abraham felt that he didn't have any right because he was being called upon to act. It is my understanding, he didn't have any right to ask the questions that he did ask at Stone. But he said some time at Stone and saying, God, you're teaching me justice, explain this to me. But the fact is, is that, is that, is that it's only after the event that God tells, that he asks the question, how is this possible, and so forth, and he says, here's the answers. 